The view of Mount St. Helens is now startling. A month of eruptions has covered the mountain with a heavy layer of dark gray ash. Deep cracks now cover the volcano, cracks that could mean a violent eruption is near. May 18th, 1980. A mountain is about to explode in Washington state. For two months, scientists had warned that Mount St. Helens was unstable. Earthquakes shook the ground. Steam vented from the summit. A bulge swelled on the north side of the volcano, growing five feet every day. But when the eruption finally came, it didn't just blow the top like a normal volcano. It tore the mountain apart sideways, releasing energy equal to more than 1600 Hiroshima bombs. Entire forests were flattened. Rivers clogged with mud flows. Ash fell across 11 states. This is the story of the most destructive volcanic eruption in American history. Mount St. Helens wasn't just a mountain. It was considered the Mount Fuji of America. A symmetrical, snow-covered peak, popular with hikers, climbers, and photographers alike. But it was also young and volatile. Formed in the last 40,000 years, it erupted frequently with its last major eruption in 1857. By 1980, most people in Washington treated it as a part of the landscape. Beautiful. Harmless. Then, on March 20th, 1980, the ground shook. A 4.2 magnitude earthquake rattled the region. Over the next weeks, more quakes followed. On March 27th, the first steam explosion tore a new crater into the summit, shooting ash thousands of feet into the air. The mountain was waking up. Scientists warmed the area. The USGS set up monitoring stations. Pilots flew overhead to take photos. What they saw was extraordinary. A bulge forming on the north side of the peak. The slope pushed outward like bread dough rising in an oven. By May, the bulge was more than 400 feet tall. Residents around the mountain were divided. Some fled, worried the volcano was about to erupt. Others stayed put, confident nothing serious would happen. One man became a symbol of defiance. Harry R. Truman, owner of a lodge at Spirit Lake. 83 years old, gruff, foul-mouthed and stubborn. There's no goddamn way here that mountain has got enough stuff to come my way. He talks standing, sitting, eating, drinking and we don't doubt even when he's sleeping. His gift for chatter has made him an instant celebrity. A folk hero overnight. He became a national hero. I had some people yesterday ask me why the hell I stay there, what am I doing that there? That's my life. Spirit Lake and Mount St. Held is my life, folks. I've lived there 50 years, it's a part of me. That mountain and that lake is a part of Truman and I'm a part of it. Reporters loved him. When asked if he'd evacuate, he snapped back. If the mountain goes, I'm going with it. You couldn't pull me out with a mute team. Authorities set up exclusion zones, but Truman refused to leave. He wasn't alone. Loggers, campers and photographers lingered near the mountain. Meanwhile, the science team grew increasingly worried. Volcanologist David Johnston monitored the volcano from a ridge six miles away. On May 17th, he radioed in. This is it. This is the most dangerous volcano in the continental United States. The next morning would prove him right. Sunday, May 18th, 1980, 8.32 a.m. A magnitude 5.1 earthquake shook the mountain. The bulging north face collapsed in the largest landslide ever recorded. Half a cubic mile of rock and ice roared downslope at 150 miles per hour. This sudden release of pressure uncorked the volcano. Instead of exploding upwards, as it would typically do, the blast tore sideways directly into the collapsing slope. Within seconds, a surge of superheated gas, rock and ash blasted north at more than 300 miles per hour. Temperatures inside the cloud reached 660 degrees Fahrenheit. Forests were leveled instantly. Trees snapped like matchsticks, flattened in a radial pattern across 230 square miles. Just 11 miles away, a photographer named Gary Rosenquist aimed his camera at the mountain. In a rapid sequence of 22 shots, he captured the eruption as it unfolded. The landslide, 
the blast, the mushrooming cloud. His photos remain some of the most iconic images of Mount St. Helens, freezing in time the exact moment a mountain blew itself apart. There's even an AI interpolated version of these events which you can see right now. The eruption column shot upward, punching through the atmosphere to a height of 80,000 feet. Inside, turbulence generated volcanic lightning. Winds inside the plume rivaled a hurricane, ripping roofs off of buildings and pelting survivors with ash and debris. Those within 10 miles had little chance. Harry Truman, his lodge, and Spirit Lake itself were obliterated. I look at that stuff on television, radio, and I said, no poo. The press has blown it up. They have blown it out of all proportion. Right. We have been getting a number of calls about the fate of Harry Truman. Right now, we do know that, in effect, Spirit Lake has disappeared. It's been covered or wiped out with, uh, with mud flows or ash or lava or a combination of all those different things. And, and uh, there's very little chance that he survived. The eruption wasn't over. Pyroclastic flows, avalanches of ash, pumice and gas raced down the mountain's flanks. Glaciers melted instantly, mixing with rock and soil to create lahars, massive mud flows that thundered down river valleys. Bridges collapsed, highways washed away, entire logging camps vanished. 50,000 feet into the ionosphere, winds pushed the ash east into communities like Yakima, turning Sunday noon into the dead of night. In Yakima, 90 miles away, Daylight turned to darkness as ash rained from the sky. The fine particles clogged engines, killed crops, and contaminated water supplies. Airlines canceled flights as far away as Minnesota. In Portland, Oregon, 50 miles south, drivers turned on headlights at midday. Cities across the northwest looked like lunar landscapes buried under gray ash. The ash cloud circled the globe in just two weeks. When the eruption ended nine hours later, the mountain was gone. Its height reduced by more than 1,300 feet. A new crater, nearly two miles wide, scarred the summit. The human toll was grim. 57 dead. Most were caught in the blast zone. Loggers, scientists, photographers. And Harry Truman, who kept his word. They estimate that Harry had about 22 seconds from the time the mountain first started to rumble to when the landslide would have hit him. They build him up as uh, the, the hero who would stick it out. And uh, he did. Thousands of animals were killed. Deer, elk, bear. Millions of salmon eggs in rivers destroyed. Economically, the damage topped one billion in today's money. Entire timber industries were crippled. Roads and bridges had to be rebuilt from scratch. Cleanup of ash alone took months. Yet, considering the scale, the death toll could have been far worse. Had the eruption occurred on a weekday, when logging crews were at work, fatalities might have been in the hundreds. Mount St. Helens was a turning point in volcanology. Before 1980, Few scientists imagined a volcano could explode sideways. The eruption showed how landslides, pressure release and lateral blasts could combine into a devastating chain reaction. It also transformed volcano monitoring. After the blast, the US created the Volcano Disaster Assistance Program, improved seismic networks and established evacuation protocols used worldwide today. The eruption became a textbook case, studied by every volcanologist ever since. The blast zone looked like another planet. Entire forests reduced to gray wastelands. Spirit Lake replaced by a debris-filled basin. Rivers choked with mud. But nature recovered in surprising ways. Lupines, hardy purple flowers, were the first to return, sprouting from ash fields within months. Elk wandered back, followed by birds and insects. Mount St. Helens became a living laboratory. Today, scientists still study the scarred landscape to study how ecosystems rebound after cataclysm. The mountain itself remains active. Steam vents still hiss from the crater. Small eruptions have occurred since, 
building a new lava dome. St. Helens will erupt again. The only question is when. And when it does, the world will remember the morning in 1980 when an entire mountain vanished. This was The Great Rewind. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more stories of destruction, survival, and the bizarre events that shaped history, check this video out next.